battle between Mark Tony and Johnny Gamble. Long left nine, long left nine. Titans, turn left nine. Turn left nine. E2. Oh. Okay. E2 here for the right. rally leaders. Titans narrow. Clearly had a problem. For right. Titans narrow, 120. Shit, Rob. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we're this thing. Okay, we two coasts to go. We're done. We're done. It's the start of day two of the Sassol Rally. Thousands of fanatical spectators once again line the streets of Melsbrake for the show that's about to commence, not knowing that the rally was turned on its head. While everyone enjoyed a well-earned rest, rally leader Marc Rongier had a battle not only to stay in contention, but also to stay in the rally. Yeah, you know, I can always say that uh, running's got a sting in its tail, and uh, yesterday afternoon we had a problem with the, the front subframe, and uh, unbeknown to us, it just sort of progressively got worse. We thought it would sort of carry on the way through the through the last two tar stages, but yeah, right at the end, it actually uh, it actually broke off, and uh, we had to literally drag it to service, um, which we we managed to do quite successfully, and the guys worked quite well and uh, and got it repaired. With Premier's troubles, Johnny Gemmel now finds himself in the lead. Yeah, Mark had a bit of problem from the White River stage to service and uh, he had to reverse there. So he got in two minutes late, so 20 seconds penalty. So now we're in the lead by 14. A slow time on the last stage of day one, combined with a 20 second lateness penalty, results in a change at the top of the leaderboard. The names of Premier and Gemmel swap around with the Toyota driver now leading proceedings. Weiss is still in third, 42 seconds ahead of Harbich, while Hint Lantachan completes the top 10. The battle now moves to the streets of Nelsprite, where the remaining crews will tackle the stopwatch as well as one another. It's a super special stage, which means that evenly matched cars race each other on different loops of the same course. In a close dice, the two cars should reach the flying finish at the same time. The fight for rally honours continues between Johnny Gemmel and Mark Lanier, and this time they can see each other as it is a race on the same piece of tarmac. It's way too close to call as they cross the flying finish, with the stopwatch revealing that Gemmel took the victory by just two tenths of a second. Next up, Basil Reed Ford Fiesta versus BP Volkswagen Polo. Jan Habik versus Hans Weiss. Habik is an old hand at this game. This time, it's the master who beats the young pretender, but only by less than a second. So not enough to threaten the Dutchman's overall position. The third battle between the new Africa developments Polo of Jaapi van Hikab and the Cecil Fiesta of John Williams is also an overall battle for fifth position. And again, it's too close to call. Just one tenth of a second in favor of Van Nikad, according to the stopwatch. In the fight between Guga Zulu and JP Damso, it's the team total Toyota of Damso who takes it by less than a second. Arachen Fekken takes a comfortable victory in his BP polo over the Q8 oils polo of youngster Hint Latergan while Enzo Keen managed to beat Leroy Polter by just under a second. <laughs> the shadow of the impressive Mbombela World Cup soccer stadium provided the scene for the next stage. At under two kilometers, the stage was once again aimed at putting up a show for the spectators, as it shouldn't really impact on the overall standards. It's the Castrol Toyota of Leroy Polter and Alvin Kutsia who record their first stage win of the season, but only by a single tenth of a second over the Basel Reed Ford Fiesta of Charles Wilkin and Greg Godlich. Hein Latigan and Juan van der Merwe set the third fastest time in the SAC Trucks Peugeot, with Mohamed Moussa and André Vermeulen crossing the finish just one tenth of a second slower behind the wheel of the team total Toyota that still showed signs of its role from the day before. In the fight for overall rally glory, Mark Lunier and Robin Houghton managed to beat Johnny Gemmel and Kellen Swan, but the one second margin wasn't enough to influence the overall leaderboard. The Castle Toyota still led the Sassel forward by 13 seconds. After the break, Sassel Rally action returns to the rough and demanding forest gravel roads around Sabi. 
will Gemmel be able to defend his lead over the closing kilometers? Or will Cronier be able to chase him down? Fast on tarmac and a short gravel stage at the Mbombela Stadium, all the rally cars and their drivers should now be warmed up and wide awake. Exactly what they need to take on stages 9 and 10 that will cover 38 kilometers with no service in between. The fight for Cecil Rally Honours has now become a two-horse race between Mark Ronier and Johnny Gemmel. Gemmel is the current leader by just over 13 seconds, but it's Mark Ronier and Robin Houghton who once again have to play the role of road sweepers on day two. The Cecil Fiesta blitz through the 22 kilometers of stage nine in just 13 minutes and 10 seconds. Max left four, Max left four, into turn right seven, no cut, turn right seven, no cut, seven, no cut, into Max easy jump, 270. Johnny Gemmel and Kellen Swan knew that Cronier would come out with all guns blazing, so the Castle Kyoto driver put his head down and gave it his all. But his time looked slow. 13 minutes and 19 seconds. His lead is cut by a full 9 seconds, courtesy of another puncture. Yeah, uh, quite far in, not far from there, maybe 3Ks, 4Ks. The difference is now just four seconds in Gemmel's favor, so Cronier knew exactly what he had to do. A time of 11 minutes and 40 seconds on stage 10 was fast, but would it be fast right enough? Right eight, right eight, into left seven, into left seven, left seven, max right three up, max right three up. Anything slower than 11 minutes and 44 seconds would hand the lead back to Cronier, but Gemmel responds by crossing the finish in 11 minutes and 42 seconds. He's still in the lead, but now by only two seconds. Behind the fight for the overall win, Dutchman Hans Weiss and Belgian co-driver Dion de Gant could only sit back and watch the battle unfold ahead of them. They were now nearly a minute behind the leading duo, but also nearly a minute ahead of fourth position. So third seemed pretty safe at this stage for the BP Polo driver. And the same could be said for fourth place Jan Habich and Robert Paisley. The Basel Reed Fiesta crew were starting to settle for fourth position after completing stages 9 and 10, 48 seconds behind Weiss, and a comfortable 36 seconds ahead of the chasing fifth position. The fifth position in question belonged to John Williams and Curvis Frey, who continued to impress in the sister Sassel Ford Fiesta. The young Catonian was consistent on day two and consolidated his fifth position over stages nine and ten. Lopi van Niekerk and Gerard Sneeman were having a fantastic run in the new Africa Developments Polo. The pair was lying in six overall, but the Polo developed a gear selection problem which caused them to drop from six to eighth in just two stages. Ergen Fekken and Pierre Aris were crawling their way back up the leaderboard and set the second fastest times of all on both stages nine and ten to jump from eighth to six in the BP Volkswagen Polo. With drivers trading places all around them, Gugu Zulu and Carl Peskin focused on the task at hand and safely maintained their seventh position at this critical part of the rally. Team Total's JP Damson and Grant Martin started this loop of stages in ninth place, but with Fanica dropping time, the Cape Townian now had his sights set on eighth. <laughs> What a drive by 17-year-old Hink Latigan and co-driver Barry White. Critics were of the opinion that it was too early to stick a 17-year-old into an S2000 car. But on the Sassel, the youngster showed maturity beyond his years. A future champion in the making. Gemmel still leads, but only by a very slim 2.4 second margin. Vice remains third ahead of Harbeck, while Fekin charges up into sixth. Lautafan Jr. rounds off the top ten. Mark Ronier was the early leader, but lost the lead overnight. He is, however, very close to taking it back. Yeah, we're trying. I mean, Johnny's coming hard, and uh, but we've got a good car behind us, and uh, that's the most important thing for us, that we have the pace to just keep chipping at it. With Cornier just 2.4 seconds back, Johnny Gemmel is now under severe pressure. So it's close. 
still three pretty big stages left and we just keep going. This was now make or break for South Africa's top gravel road races. With a field of so many fast cars and drivers, top 10 position on any round of the South African Rally Championship is an achievement. with all sorts of problems and although he set a number of top two stage times including a few stage wins on day two the sassel is an event which he will want to forget <laughs> mohammed musa and andre vermeulen's weekend inside the total Toyota was very similar the roll on day one simply cost too much time but musa's speed and determination on day two is something that bodes very well for the future <laughs> Leroy Poulter and Alvin Kutsia were worthy winners of the Sassel in 2011. But in 2012, the Kassel Toyota simply lost too much time on day one. And Poulter had no choice but to settle for 11th position over him. Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson were also thinking of what could have been. But rallying can be a cool sport as they were forced to retire the BP Polo with the finishing line literally in sight. The gearbox selection problems inside the new Africa Developments Polo of Jaapie van Eekert and Gerard Sneijman could not be repaired, causing van Eekert to drop from an initial 6 to finish the Sassel in 10th, but he was still happy with his performance. And 8th overall after long and demanding Sassel rally was a satisfying result for JP Damso and Grant Martin. The team total crew's speed on day 2 once more underlined his performance capabilities to his rivals for the remainder of the season. And speaking of speed on day 2, the climb up the leaderboard from Hergen Fekken and Pierre Aris on day 2 was simply remarkable. At one stage, Fekken even managed to reach the top 6, but another puncture on stage 12 dropped the BP Polo down to 7. John Williams and Kubis Frey once again made their intentions very clear by showing rally winning speed and it will only be a matter of time and a stroke of good luck for a change before he will fight for podiums and even victories. Fifth overall for the Sassel Ford Fiesta driver. Jan Habich and Robert Paisley may not have had rally winning pace but it was only their second event behind the left hand drive wheel of the Basel Reed Ford Fiesta. Habich records his second consecutive fourth place finish and climbs to third overall on the championship points table. And who knows, maybe the old master will add a seventh title to his tally of six come the end of this season. The Sassel Rally is a tricky event and the 2012 edition once again proved it with many of South Africa's top and experienced drivers falling victim to the difficult stages. This makes the performance from Hans Weiss and Bjorn de Gant even more impressive. Not only was the Dutchman consistently fast, but he also kept the new BB Volkswagen Polo in one piece, and that on roads and conditions that he's never seen before. His third place serves as a warning to the other drivers for the rest of the season. The fight for S2000 Challenge honours was almost just as intense as the one for overall rally glory. It was also a welcome return to rallying for Werner Kukumur and co-driver Etienne Lorenz who stuck to their guns on day two in an effort to bring the glass shredded Toyota home. They did exactly that and were awarded with a fine third position in the new S2000 Challenge class. But ahead of Kukumur, the battle was always between Gugu Zulu and Henk Latigan. It is both Zulu and Latigan's first season behind the wheels of powerful and four-wheel drive S2000 rally machinery. The fact that both drive similar cars also added to the excitement. But in the end, it was the BP Volkswagen of Gugu Zulu and Cole Peskin who managed to emerge victorious over the Q8 Oils Polo of Henk Latigan and Barry White by a not such a comfortable 23 seconds. Ninth overall for Lodgham Jr. was his best ever result, while sixth overall in an old S2000 that was only allowed to use 12 tyres for the event was an impressive result for Google Zulu. I'm just happy to finish. I'm, I'm pretty much ecstatic. I've been working hard at it and the team have been really behind me as well, so it's good to be here. 
And then there was the massacre called Super 1600. These guys and girls fought tooth and nail for Super 1600 glory. But in most cases, it was the tough Sassol stages that got the better of them. Overnight, third place pairing Nick van der Westhuizen and Henry Dierlove were the first ones to throw in the towel after the oil cooler inside their SA Earthworks Ford Fiesta cried enough. Class veterans Craig Trott and Robbie Kutsia called their way up to third in class after stage eight. But in a rare spurt of bad luck, the veterans' total Toyota broke a drive shaft, leaving them on the side of the road and out of the event. Overnight leaders Ashley Haig-Smith and Craig Perry managed to increase their lead to nearly three minutes halfway through day two. But the Castle Team React Ford Fiesta suffered a punch in stage nine and dropped nearly six minutes. This only dropped them down to second position, but on stage 12, the Fiesta also broke a drive shaft, forcing them to retire. After Haig Smith's troubles, the Yato Tools Toyota of Guy Bottrell and Simon Basie Lyle inherited the lead. Bottrell drove well and looked set to claim the Super 1600 victory, but the engine in his Toyota had other plans. It dropped the valve and also left him stranded. With Super 1600 competitors dropping like flies, the team total duo of Stefani Boerta and Angela Shields found themselves in third position with only two stages to go, but a broken control arm prevented the ladies from reaching the end. The brother and sister pairing of Christoph and Celeste Sneders retired from the rally on day one, but re-entered for day two under the Super Rally rules, which allows a competitor to do just that, but with severe time penalties. Their persistence paid off, as they claimed the points for third position. The BP polo of Megan Verlach and Hilton Orfrey slowly called their way up the leaderboard as the competition around them self-destructed. At the end of the tough Cecil rally, Verlach was rewarded for reaching the end with a fine second position. And after starting the final day nearly six minutes off the pace and down in fifth position, Morne Janse van Rensburg and Rikus Ferry would probably not have put any money on themselves for the class victory. But rallying has once again proved what an unpredictable sport it can be. The Eastern Cape youngster did not make any mistakes and thanks to a reliable GC diesel sponsored Volkswagen Polo, he claimed the first a Super 1600 victory of his career. But the big question that still needed to be answered was simply, who will win the 2012 Sassol Rally? The contenders, Johnny Gemmel and Mark Cronier. Castrol Toyota Aurus versus Sassol Ford Fiesta. With just a few kilometers to go, the gap between Gemmel in first and Cronier in second is a mere 2.4 seconds. This is where rallies are won or lost, and where heroes are made, the stuff of legends. Both drivers are now giving it their all and more in an effort to claim Sassel Rally glory. The gloves were off as Cronier closes the gap by another 1.6 seconds. Gemmel's lead was now less than a second, or 18ths of a second to be exact. It could not be any closer. But Johnny Gemmel is immune to pressure and took up the challenge once more. The Castrol Toyota driver responded by beating the Sassel Fiesta on the penultimate dirt stage by another close margin of just 2.6 seconds. Although in a fight this close, 2.6 seconds is more than what it sounds like. The lead was back up to 3.4 seconds. It's 2 a.m. 5 there, so now we'll keep going. This is the final battleground. 21 kilometers of forest rally roads that will decide the outcome. So who will win the 2012 Sassel Rally? I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> Absolutely me, man. What do you think? <laughs> One could almost feel the tension hanging in the air like a cloud of dust. But inside the Sassel Fort Fiesta, Mark Lanier was focused on one thing, and one thing only, to cross the flying finish in the shortest possible time. 13 minutes and 2.3 seconds. He could not go any faster. This is it. The moment of truth for Johnny Gemmel and Carolyn Swan. Johnny had already laid down the gauntlet and Gemmel knew exactly what he had to do. Anything slower than 13 minutes and 5.7 seconds would not be enough. Gemmel's time, 13 minutes and 
8.5 seconds. It's not enough. We came close. We had to go now, but it's not enough. Heartbreak for the Toyota team bosses. Back in Nelspreet, there was still one short stage that stood between Mark Cronier and victory. The traditional showgrounds finish is another terrific effort by Sassel to allow rally fans to get close to the action. But at less than a kilometer, chances that it will influence the outcome are very slim. The difference between our new leader Mark Cronier and second place John Gemmel was now 2.8 seconds. Try as you may. 2.8 seconds is simply too much to even consider on such a short spectator stage. Both drivers knew the fight was over. Gamel had no choice but to concede defeat as he lost another three tenths of a second. Mark Lanier wins the Sassel Rally. A narrow 3.1 second victory for Mark Lanier over Johnny Gamel, with Hans Weiss a distant third. Habeck takes another fourth ahead of Williams. Less than 10 seconds separate Zulu in 6th and Damso in 8th. In only his second event in South Africa, Hans Weiss sprays the champagne from the third step of the podium. I'm really happy with that, so especially also for the team, they did a good job. We have a good, uh, good car now for so far, but we have still some work to do. For Johnny Gemmel and Carolyn Swan, it was so close that 3.1 seconds proved to be just a little too far. We're happy as a team, eh? We had two second places, a second in championship. So things are looking all right. We just have to try and improve a little bit and we'll be right there at the top. And what a fantastic result for Mark Cronier and Robin Houghton, who claim their second victory in as many events. And to make it even sweeter, a victory for Sassol at their own event. Yeah, look, it, uh, he always won a bit more margin, but at the end of the day, uh, it's important to... You know, it's good for the sport. You know, at the end of the day, people come here to watch racing, and I think that's what they got. Another successful event, hosted by Fuel and Oil's giant, Sassel. Yeah, I'm very happy, uh, but there's a lot of work that has been done by the team to make sure that uh, it's, it's, it's as popular as it is. We engage all the stakeholders in the province, as well as in the Nelspreet and the Mombela municipality area. It also doesn't happen often that a sponsor's car wins the sponsor's event. But on the Sassel, it did. We didn't ask for anything more. I had to get this win and I got it. 